María Alquesta. مستر خالد وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته مستر خالد معانا طيب ولا ايه؟ انا كنت بحاول اكلم بس الدكتور معلش هو الميل بتاع بهاء. الميل بتاع الدكتور بهاء ما وصلوش هو حضرتك بعته على انهي ميل؟ الميل اللي عنده بتاع الدكتور بهاء اللي هو الميل العادي بتاعه ابعت لحضرتك ميل على الواتساب دلوقتي تبعت له لينك طيب عشان هو ده
Millions of medications are being manufactured every day. But this one has a reason of existence. Unlike other medications, it has been called out by the existing unfulfilled need of the Egyptian patients. However, Egypt is one of the most populous countries in the Middle East, the second largest pharma market size in MENA region, the oldest medical school in the Middle East. However, the Egyptian pharma market is a unique in nature. Why? 70% of the Egyptian patients are out of pocket, suffering the lower income. Moreover, the delayed patent law. Regarding patency law, other countries that strictly apply patency law could keep exclusive right to multinational pharma companies to be sole market authorization holder that allow innovative molecules up to 10 years monopoly. Luckily, the patent laws are not fully enforced and remain notably below the international standards, aiming to be in the patient's favor side. Regarding low purchasing power, Egyptian population below poverty line are 25%. Pharmaceutical sales per capita are 26.2 US dollars, which is very low compared to neighbor countries. Socioeconomic class who can't afford the brands of innovators. 70% of healthcare expenditures are out of pocket, i.e. patients cover most of their medications bill. How does it feel when the patient gives up the treatment just because of the unaffordable prices? That's how bad the Egyptian patients feel. It's clear that there is a gap in the Egyptian pharma market. The role of the local national companies is to on fixing this gap by offering affordable, innovative medical solutions without sacrificing the quality, aiming to maintain our community healthy and enjoying well-being. That is why Inspire exists. That's why Inspire Pharma created its medications as a sample of millions that will be manufactured with care, where we see the patient behind the disease, to fill in the gap between innovation, quality and affordable prices. Relying on the ethical behavior, innovation, quality and professionalism. Our vision. We have aspiration to position Inspire as one of the top five pharmaceutical organizations in the Middle East region within 10 years regarding. Inspire milestones, total sales evolution, company growth pattern in sales and headcount year over year. We build our company as a brand for innovation and excellence in the pharmaceutical market. The first medication has been into the market since 2005, when we attracted lots of talents to serve, achieving the desired Inspire goals. Then, 15 molecules were launched successfully since 2010. These medications contain innovative medical solutions for different pharmaceutical fields. We are committed to meet the pharmacopoeia and in-house standards for all our products to supply consistent quality that exceeds customer requirements. We are focusing on A. Material sourcing. Share updated approved supplier database. Being updated by attend global CPHI exhibitions. Professional technical discussion with suppliers. B. Bioequivalent study. Stick to FDA guidelines. Currently, we are operating in six business units. CNS line. Gain and Rehuma line. Diabetes line. Cardiovascular line. Hospital line. HCV line. We are proud to be your partner in helping reduce burden of illness among Egyptian community by offering up-to-date innovative medical solutions with consistent high-quality standard at affordable prices. of medications are being manufactured every day. But this one has a reason of existence. Unlike other medications, it has been called out by the existing unfulfilled need of the Egyptian patients. However, Egypt is one of the most populous countries in the Middle East, the second largest pharma market size in MENA region, the oldest medical school in the Middle East. However, the Egyptian pharma market is a unique in nature. Why? 70% of the Egyptian patients are out of pocket, suffering the lower income. Moreover, the delayed patent law. Regarding patency law, 
other countries that strictly apply patency law could keep exclusive right to multinational pharma companies to be sole market authorization holder that allow innovative molecules up to 10 years monopoly. Luckily, the patent laws are not fully enforced and remain notably below the international standards, aiming to be in the patient's favor side. Regarding low purchasing power, Egyptian population below poverty line are 25%. Pharmaceutical sales per capita are 26.2 US dollars, which is very low compared to neighbor countries. Socioeconomic class who can't afford the brands of innovators. 70% of healthcare expenditures are out of pocket, i.e. patients cover most of their medications bill. How does it feel when the patient gives up the treatment just because of the unaffordable prices? That's how bad the Egyptian patients feel. It's clear that there is a gap in the Egyptian pharma market. The role of the local national companies is to on fixing this gap by offering affordable innovative medical solutions without sacrificing the quality, aiming to maintain our community healthy and enjoying well-being. That is why Inspire exists. That's why Inspire Pharma created its medications as a sample of millions that will be manufactured with care, where we see the patient behind the disease, to fill in the gap between innovation, quality and affordable prices. Relying on the ethical behavior, innovation, quality and professionalism. Our vision. We have aspiration to position Inspire as one of the top five pharmaceutical organizations in the Middle East region within 10 years regarding. Inspire milestones, total to sales in the gap. company growth pattern in sales and headcount year over year. We build our company as a brand for innovation and excellence in the pharmaceutical market. The first medication has been into the market since 2005, when we attracted lots of talents to serve, achieving the desired Inspire goals. Then, 15 molecules were launched successfully since 2010. These medications contain innovative medical solutions for different pharmaceutical fields. We are committed to meet the pharmacopoeia and in-house standards for all our products to supply consistent quality that exceeds customer requirements. We are focusing on A. Material sourcing. Share updated approved supplier database. Being updated by attend global CPHI exhibitions. Professional technical discussion with suppliers. B. Bioequivalent study. Stick to FDA guidelines. Currently, we are operating in six business units. CNS line. Gain and Rehuma line. Diabetes line. Cardiovascular line. Hospital line. HCV line. We are proud to be your partner in helping reduce burden of illness among Egyptian community by offering up-to-date innovative medical solutions with consistent high-quality standard at affordable prices. of medications are being manufactured every day but this one has a reason of existence unlike other medications it has been called out by the existing unfulfilled need of the Egyptian patients however Egypt is one of the most populous countries in the Middle East the second largest pharma market size in MENA region the oldest medical school in the Middle East however Egyptian pharma market is a unique in nature why 70% of the Egyptian patients are out of pocket, suffering the lower income. Moreover, the delayed patent law. Regarding patency law, other countries that strictly apply patency law could keep exclusive right to multinational pharma companies to be sole market authorization holder that allow innovative molecules up to 10 years monopoly. Luckily, the patent laws are not fully enforced and remain notably below the international standards, aiming to be in the patient's favor side. Regarding low purchasing power, Egyptian population below poverty line are 25%. Pharmaceutical sales per capita are 26.2 US dollars, which is very low compared to neighbor countries. Socioeconomic class who can't afford the brands of innovators. 
70% of healthcare expenditures are out of pocket, i.e. patients cover most of their medications bill. How does it feel when the patient gives up the treatment just because of the unaffordable prices? That's how bad the Egyptian patients feel. It's clear that there is a gap in the Egyptian pharma market. The role of the local national companies is to on fixing this gap by offering affordable, innovative medical solutions without sacrificing the quality, aiming to maintain our community healthy and enjoying well-being. That is why Inspire exists. That's why Inspire Pharma created its medications as a sample of millions that will be manufactured with care, where we see the patient behind the disease, to fill in the gap between innovation, quality and affordable prices. Relying on the ethical behavior, innovation, quality and professionalism. Our vision. We have aspiration to position Inspire as one of the top five pharmaceutical organizations in the Middle East region within 10 years regarding. Inspire milestones, total sales evolution, company growth pattern in sales and headcount year over year. We build our company as a brand for innovation and excellence in the pharmaceutical market. The first medication has been into the market since 2005, when we attracted lots of talents to serve, achieving the desired Inspire goals. Then, 15 molecules were launched successfully since 2010. These medications contain innovative medical solutions for different pharmaceutical fields. We are committed to meet the pharmacopoeia and in-house standards for all our products to supply consistent quality that exceeds customer requirements. We are focusing on A. Material sourcing. Share updated approved supplier database. Being updated by attend global CPHI exhibitions. Professional technical discussion with suppliers. B. Bioequivalent study. Stick to FDA guidelines. Currently, we are operating in six business units. CNS line. Gyn and Rehuma line. Diabetes line. Cardiovascular line. Hospital line. HCV line. We are proud to be your partner in helping reduce burden of illness among Egyptian community by offering up-to-date innovative medical solutions with consistent high-quality standard at affordable prices. of medications are being manufactured every day but this one has a reason of existence unlike other medications it has been called out by the existing unfulfilled need of the Egyptian patients however Egypt is one of the most populous countries in the Middle East the second largest pharma market size in MENA region the oldest medical school in the Middle East however Egyptian pharma market is a unique in nature why 70% of the Egyptian patients are out of pocket, suffering the lower income. Moreover, the delayed patent law. Regarding patency law, other countries that strictly apply patency law could keep exclusive right to multinational pharma companies to be sole market authorization holder that allow innovative molecules up to 10 years monopoly. Luckily, the patent laws are not fully enforced and remain notably below the international standards, aiming to be in the patient's favor side. Regarding low purchasing power, Egyptian population below poverty line are 25%. Pharmaceutical sales per capita are 26.2 US dollars, which is very low compared to neighbor countries. Socio-economic class who can't afford the brands of innovators. 70% of healthcare expenditures are out of pocket, i.e. patients cover most of their medications bill. How does it feel when the patient gives up the treatment just because of the unaffordable prices? That's how bad the Egyptian patients feel. It's clear that there is a gap in the Egyptian pharma market. The role of the local national companies is to on fixing this gap by offering affordable, innovative medical solutions without sacrificing the quality, aiming to maintain our community healthy and enjoying well-being. That is why Inspire exists. 
That's why Inspire Pharma created its medications as a sample of millions that will be manufactured with care, where we see the patient behind the disease, to fill in the gap between innovation, quality and affordable prices. Relying on the ethical behavior, innovation, quality and professionalism. Our vision. We have aspiration to position Inspire as one of the top five pharmaceutical organizations in the Middle East region within 10 years regarding. Inspire milestones, total sales evolution, company growth pattern in sales and headcount year over year. We build our company as a brand for innovation and excellence in the pharmaceutical market. The first medication has been into the market since two. شكرا تفضل دكتور تفضل بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نجتمع اليوم طبعا في لقاء ويبينار طبعا من الحاجات الجميله بتاعت الجمعيه ان هي عامله كونتينوس ميديكال اديوكيشن وده ثاني محاضرات عن الهيبس النهارده اللي هو الهيب ستيت اوف ذا ارت هتتكون من اربع محاضرات المحاضرات كلها بتتراوح عن او بتتكلم عن الهيب فيها دعوه كريمه من شركه انسباير فور فور ذيس سبونسر فور ذيس ميتنج السبيكر في في المجموعه مجموعه من مختاره من اربع جامعات مختلفه لها لها مدارسها جامعه اسكندريه جامعه بعدين جامعه الازهر وبعدين جامعه المنيا وبعدين جامعه اسيوط كلهم جامعات فيها العراقه من جامعة اسكندرية الأستاذ الدكتور حسن حسيني وده من الناس البايونير في الأوروسبيدي من جامعة القاهرة من جامعة الأزهر الدكتور بهاء علي قرنة ومن جامعة المنيا البروفيسور الدكتور محمد الشافعي وده غني عن التعريف ووكيل الكلية ومعانا أخونا العزيز والأستاذ الدكتور حاتم جلال زكي وهو من الناس البايونير في الإب أسروسكوب الأجندة عبارة عن أربع محاضرات، المحاضرات هتتكون برضو كل سبيكر هيبتدي يتكلم على نوع معين، أنا هتكلم على الإمبينجمنت، هيب إمبينجمنت، الأستاذ الدكتور حسن هيتكلم على فاسكر نكروزس، الأستاذ الدكتور جلال، الدكتور الأستاذ الدكتور محمد الشاف هيتكلم على كيس برزنتيشن، والأستاذ الدكتور حاتم جلال هيكلمنا على الأرثروسكوبي أوف ذا هيب. هنبتدي الأجندة بمحاضرة مني اللي هي هيب إمبينجمنت أو في المرأة استبلم هيب إمبينجمنت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم في المرأة استبلم هيب أو إمبينجمنت اللي هي فا وبنوكو اهلا وسهلا ده أول ناس يكلموا عنها اللي هي مجموعة في في سيوز University of Bern in Switzerland, they cannot be talking about the abnormal contact between the femoral and the cerebellum, which leading to a damage and the various degree of chondral injury causing of early degenerative changes in young adult here. It is an abnormal impingement between the femoral head, neck, junction, and the cerebellum, apparent with precipitating in activity required extreme range of motion. زي الحالات البلي والجيمنستيك والمارشال ارتس. دايما نلاقيها فين؟ في بيشنت ويز ويز هيلثي ذا نورمال بيرسون اكتف ادلت والايج بتاعه 25 تو 50 ييرز اولد. دايما دول اثليتيك وعندهم فيري اكتف واكستريم رينج اوف هيب موشن بيستخدموها زي في حالات الجامبينج والديب هيب فليكشن وفيفيتنج اوف ذا هيب ودي موجوده في حالات الايس هوكي والمارشال ارت والفوتبول والجولف والعاب اخرى مختلفه. لما نيجي للباثو اناتوميكال هنلاقي ان هم هم 3 تايبس، التايب 1 اللي هو كام دي معناها كام دي فيمرال بيز ديس اوردر او بنسر ويتش از استابلون بيز ديس اوردر او ميكس تايب ودي 3 تايبس اللي هم افيلابل از باثو اناتوميكال. 
نيجي للكام اللي هو فيمورا استابل امبيجمنت الكام كام فروم اي دوتش وورد مين دوجز كود كوتش ات از كوز باي جامبينج اوف ان ابنورمال فيمورال هيد ويز انكريسينج ويز انكريس ذا ريديوس انتز استابل ديورينج فورسبل موشن سبيشالي فريكشن ريفيرد تو ذا فيمورال بيز ديس اوردر دي معناها ان هي بتتاثر بسبب الفيمورال بيز اند ات از ان يونج اثليتيك ميل افكتي مور ذان ذا فيميل الباثو ان باثو ميكانيزم في الكام اللي هي فاهم ان اكستنشن ذا سفيريكال ذا سفيريس ذا سفيريسيتي اوف ذا فيمورال هيد ليد هيد داز نوت انترفير ويز استابلم موفمنت بات انفليكشن ذا استابلم ليبريم is lifted by the asphyxiety of the femoral head and the stabilum cartilage is compressed by this way. This is uh, compressed by the femoral head. And this is what happening in the cam type. Cam impingement characterized by any of the following. Either decrease for head nature ratio, as, uh, asphyxiety of the femoral head, decrease for femoral offset of femoral neck retroversion. This sphericity, a mismatching causing sharing of the chondrolibral junction leading to cartilage, deal myelination, and liberal, liberal separation. The cam, cam type, always the show of man, spherical head, or reduce the head neck offset, or widening of the head neck junctions, or pistol grip deformed. The cam type, damaging of the anterior superior area of the stabulum at one o'clock. And the male to the female is 14 to 1. It is common in males than in the female. Uh, the pincer, uh, uh, pincer, the femoral stabilum impingement, the missile comes from French world being two pinch, is abundant. The abandonment is the result of a stabilum abnormality, which often, which often, which often generally cooks a profonda or local and anterior overcoverage the assembly introversion. Always uh, affected the anterior superior quadrant of the uh, acetabulum. And the pincer in extension, the deeper socket not interfere with the movement, but in flexion as the femoral neck approaches the acetabulum rim, the librium is crushed together with the narrowing band of the acetabulum cartilage. Uh, and if the femoral head uh, is levered out of the socket, the posterior inferior counter coup lesion occur, and it can be occur here in the counter attack. It is uh, always the anterior superior quadrant of the femur. In the pencil type, there is extensive uh, uh, acetabulum coverage, like coxa profunda, or acetabulum retroversion, or retrusion acetabuli. We will speak about each one uh, later on. In the mixed cam uh, pincer, cam pincer, which is, is a common, the cam and the pincer uh, femoral acetabulum embangement really occur in, uh, in isolation. Most have a combination of both. So uh, the combination of, of cam pincer embangement can uh, include in both patient population, I uh, mean that affected the male and the female, referred to, to a combination of the above, up to 80%. Is cafe deformity causing various pattern of impingement. Femoral acetabulum impingement in the pincer impingement is the more common in the middle aged woman. In the cam type, the impingement is the more common in younger athletic male. In the, uh, in the pincer type, a small area of chondral damage and the more benign. But in the cam type, it is more common in young and there is a deep extensive chondral damage. This is uh, three types. This is a normal. This is a pincer, and this is a mixed, and this is a cam type. What are the predisposing factors always affecting young patients and often, uh, often active and usually male more than the, uh, the, the female? There is a predisposing factor for femoral establishment embangement, like a disease like leg calvary versus disease, congenital hip dislocation, sleepy capital femoral, a vascular necrosis, malunited fracture, establishment protrusion, and the retro, uh, uh, retroverted acetabulum and the prominent femoral head neck junctions. Mm -hmm. What are the proposal etiology? We have to know that it is uh, either we have an uh, abnormal hip morphology, means that uh, an uh, abnormal hip morphology with a normal stress, abnormal anatomy, and the normal hip morphology but with excessive range of hip movement. 
patient with a minor trauma or underlying hip pathology, always there is an post-traumatic free loose body into the joint, lateral impact, uh, impact injury to the greater trochanter, leg calve versus a slipped femoral head epiphysis, asphericity of the head, previous femoral neck fractures. Always this disease affecting uh, the people with a very high activity like football, dancer, and martial arts. All this means that uh, we have a large hip range of motion, we have an axial load of the hip, and we have a torsion enforcement on the hip joint. This, uh, we have an, what we call the physiological uh, articular cap of cabinji. This means that uh, if you exceeded this physiological arc, you mean you affected your hip or the joint. So the hip anatomy, we, we have to know that the, the hip is polyaxial bone and socket synovial joint. Always there is a stability and the mobility. Stability and the mobility depend on the labrium and the ligament, the iliofemoral, obibofemoral, iscofemoral, and the neck shaft angle which is up to 135, and the neck uh, antiversion angle is up to 15 degrees. Also, uh, don't forget that the hip joint consists of a sternum, labrum, and head at the neck junction of the femoral articular capsule. Also, the femoral head, almost spherical, covered by the labrum at its two thirds beyond the point of its equ uh, equator. What about the diagnosis and differential diagnosis of the impingement? The patient presented with a groin pain, anterior hip pain, this is the main complaint. Pain over the trochanter, pain with the flexion and the internal rotation, with the limitation of the hip movement and usually unilateral, and the start after night trauma. Always, he is young and or middle age active adult with minor trauma or no trauma history, increasing feel pain with activity and prone sitting, difficult to get in out of the car, arising from the seat or bed, difficult to do the shoes socket. The very important sign is what we call the C sign, the grip C sign. This patient catch his hip by this way. The C sign with their hand over the painful hip, which is a very specific sign for the hip disease. The femoral acetabular impingement, the clinical, we have two types, the anterior femoral acetabular impingement, the pain inflection, adduction with internal rotation. But the posterior femoral acetabulum impingement, the pain is uh, in extension with external rotation. The symptoms always the walking pattern is very important. You inspect the patient either by antalgic gait or by Trendelberg gait. And you have to know that Trendelberg gait, we have two types, either both Trendelberg or compensatory Trendelberg, and we explained this before. Positive impingement test, about 90% of uh, femoral acetabulum suffering test is positive. But we have a false positive, other possible causes like hip dysplasia or a vascular necrosis can give a false positive. A slip to capital femoral epiphysis can give a false positive. Leg calvary disease before the impingement can lead to false positive. What about the special test? We, uh, we, we, we have tests for the impingement of the hip with FEPAR test, the Patrick test is very important. To, uh, to make the, uh, the uh, flexion, abduction, external rotation, and extension of test. And this is the tender uh, to, uh, to stress the ipsilateral sacroiliac joint, and the pain in the posterior in sacroiliac arthritis, or pain in the anterior in the hip arthritis. This is uh, how to interpret it, this test. And this is how to do the test, and fix the hip, flex the knee, external rotation and abduction with external rotation. What about the score test? A score, a score test, the patient position supine, proceeding done by moving the hip in the arm. And uh, this is uh, if a patient expresses the pain, there is an implicated uh, either arthritis or a septum labral tear if there is an acclique. The other test is the last, uh, last thing for uh, stage field test, resistant straight leg raising test, and uh, this is, can be done by straightening the leg against resistance, and the pain felt in the groin is suggestive of uh, intra-articular pathology. The other tests, the FIDAR test, the flexion, abduction, internal rotation, test of, uh, or the anterior impingement test, 
and if there is catching type of pain, then the test is positive. Posterior impingement test and hyperextension, abduction with external rotation, and this is if there is a catching type of pain, then the test is positive. The last one is McCarthy test, the patient position supine in the coach. The, if it is a patient complaint of catching pain, uh, the test is positive. So what other investigation? You have to do an X-ray, you have to read the X-ray, do an MRI uh, uh, and the MRA and CT scan. In, in, the, M, uh, uh, in the plain X-ray, it is very important to take a uh, uh, post hips anteroposterior with the, with the foot internal rotation of 15 degrees to see the shelter lines, uh, iliopectineal lines, acetylum roof, and the anterior wall and the posterior wall of the hip. And this is an example of non spherical head with free intraarticular blue spots. In the pincer type, in the X ray, we have, five, we have six uh, uh, signs for the X ray. In, uh, in the pincer type, uh, femoral establishment impingement, a mild to old age woman, always for uh, 50, uh, 40 years, seen in uh, a palate dancer, as it is an apparent radiological sign. It's coxa profunda, protrudes as supply, acetabulum retroversion, decreased field exclusion index, natural acetabulum index, and the posterior wall sign. We will speak about each one, one by one. Posterior inferior cartilage abrasion, abrasion due to uh, counter coup engines. This is the signs, and we'll explain uh, one by one in the next slides. For coxa profunda, means that the head, and the coxa profunda, the floor of the fossa of the acetabulum overlaps the ilio, uh, uh, ilio ischial line medially. This is the ischial line. Uh, this is the normal here, the acetabulum. And this is uh, uh, ilioischial line. If the acetabulum passing medially, like this one, this is I mean that there is an coxa profunda. This is a benzer type uh, femoral acetabulum impingement, creating deep acetabulum and general overcover. And this is an example of the coxa profunda passing the ilioischial lines. What about true acetabulum? The protrusion of supply occurring when the femoral head overlaps the ischial line medially, and this is in the benzer type uh, femoral acetabulum impingement. And here you can see that uh, this is the ilio, uh, ischial line, and this is uh, the head, and here the head is passing the lines, and this is passing and going to medial. This is an example of protrusion of supply. What later, uh, lateral center edge, uh, lateral center edge angle? Lateral center edge angle in Benzer type. Normal, it is between uh, 25 to 30 degrees. Here is the uh, lateral center edge angle. When the labrum increasing in the size, this angle will be increasing more than 39 degrees. Decre decrease for extrusion index, the decrease for extrusion index in the Benzer type. And the angle, the percentage between exclusion angle A and C, this is A and E, A and E, and the percentage will 25 in the normal subject, but if it decrease in the femoral, uh, the femoral head become more covered. This is a decrease for exclusion index. A stablum index, a stablum index in the benzer type should be positive. Be, uh, become negative uh, as the acetabulum deepened. Here, here the, the head, it is uh, normal, but here it is reversed going down because the prominent of the acetabulum. The acetabulum retroversion, the acetabulum retroversion, pencil type uh, fam, the crossover sign, the focal acetabulum uh, over cover, a cranial anterior wall line projected laterally, and uh, this is the crossover sign. This is the normal anterior wall. This is the posterior wall, but here is the crossover sign, the posterior wall and the uh, anterior wall crossing each other. This is an example of cross uh, over sign uh, in the acetabulum uh, 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 impingement. Posterior wall sign in the pencil type, the posterior wall 
should uh, descend through the center of the femoral head. The, this is the normal, this is the center of the femoral head. If it is go medially, then there is a deficiency in lateral, this means the prominent of the posterior wall sign. This is an example, this is the center of the head, and the posterior wall more going more laterally. The linear identification signs, uh, linear identification sign in the Benzer type uh, uh, femoral stable impingement occur due to mechanical injury and their active changes uh, from the uh, abnormal newborn formations. Associated with Benzer type, the osacetabli, there is an abnormal ossification as a superior sternum floor. In the CAM type, the CAM type, which is affecting the younger male. Uh, more than 30, uh, uh, 32 years, primary femoral abnormality, uh, a spherical femoral head. And the primary ideological signs is pistol grip deformity, CCD angle less than 125, horizontal gross plate, alpha angle greater than 50 degrees, femoral head neck offset less than 18, uh, 8 millimeter, and femoral retroversion. We'll go one by one. Here is the uh, uh, pistol grip uh, deformity, and uh, the pistol grip deformity, which affect in, uh, which you, you can see it in the CAM type, femoral assembly impingement, uh, loss of uh, normal concavity, uh, concavity. In the etiology either gross abnormality, scaphy, uh, versus disease, and the fracture healing. This is uh, pistol type, this is uh, pistol grip deformity. And the horizontal gross plate sign, the, the gross plate become horizontal in the CAM type femoral acetabulum impingement. Alpha angle, the alpha angle in, in the CAM type, this is an angle between the center horizontal of the neck and the junction of, or the point attachment of the head with the neck. And this is the angle, is alpha angle. They are used as an objective representation of the prominence of the anterior femoral head neck junction, abnormality is greater than 50 degrees. Here, this is the alpha angle in uh, CAM type. And they can they, uh, do it anteroposterior and uh, lateral, mainly lateral, the, the uh, in alpha angle. Femoral head neck offset, the femoral head neck offset, the CAM type, this is the offset between the, the top of the head and the, the, uh, the pointing of the point of junction between the neck, this is the offset. In the CAM type, this is the offset is diminished abnormal, this is then 10 millimeters. Also, the femoral retroversion, the femoral retroversion in the CAM type in the congenital absolute traumatic calculated by the CT, the CT scan, uh, this is the retroversion angle. Also, the Coxavara, the decreased phoenix shaft angle, it says abnormal located femoral neck, decrease with capture column, the FCL angle, normally 120, 25 to 135. Second, the science, there is a, a labral ossification, bony impact changes, synovial herniation, and the premature degenerative changes. Second, the MRI changes, it can superlateral changes can occur, and you can, uh, you can see it in the MRI or MRA. The classical MRI finding in the Benzer Tile, a posterior inferior cartilage abnormality due to counter coup injury occurring in the inferior part of the stabulum. This is an example. What about the rule of the CT scan? CT scan helping for the manifestation to see the bony injury. CT more effective in the bone structure. Free intra-articular loose body can be, the, can be manifested by the CT scan. And also, you can by the CT scan, you can identify the size and the shape of uh, the impingement. And you can see the, an abnormality or cyst formation by the CT. The, uh, what about MRI or MRA? In MRI, uh, MRI more efficient for soft tissue structure, labrum and stabium. But MRA, it is a standard. It is now becomes a standard investigation for uh, femoral acetabulum impingement, a uh, rupture of the labrum or abnormality of the head neck uh, relationship, or ossification of the labrum or measurement of alpha angle. This can be done by MRA. 
What about the differential diagnosis for the hip impingement? Uh, uh, don't forget about the inguinal hernia, low back pain disorder from L5, trochanteric bursitis, hip instability, iliopsoas pathology, esquifemoral impingement, abductor strain, and athletic pupillagia, and the lumbar decrobosis. What about the treatment for impingement? Always uh, think about non pharmacologic and pharmacological. Non-surgical to me, like non-steroidal, corticosteroid, physiotherapy, and the massage, and the root cause. What do you mean root cause? Root cause, that is the, the fundamental reason for the occurrence of the problem. You search for the, the main problem and looking for it. The conserved treatment is, aim is to improve the symptom, the rest, the modification of the activity, avoid the excessive motion activity, non-steroidal, intensive physiotherapy, and a temporary relief of uh, symptom conservative treatment. The surgical treatment, it is, we have a lot about uh, the management by surgical, like intertrochanteric flexion, bulgus osteotomy, arthroscopic debridement, removal of a non-spherical portion of the femoral head, reduce the size of the stabilum rim, and the periacetabulum peri osteotomy, total arthroplasty, joint reshape, liberal repair and the cartilage regrowth the ligamentum repair. Uh, open surgery for uh, the lateral or posterior approach can be used. Uh, dislocation of the femoral head with care to its blood supply. And the osteoplastic of the cam head neck junction with caution not to tourist resected over 30% of the anterior lateral quadrant of the neck. Risk of the neck fracture is a complication. This is an example for the resection of uh, the cam type. And this is an example. And the hip arthroscopy, and the Professor Atom will uh, go through it. This is performing in the lateral subion position. And we have three portals, anterior, anterolateral, and posterolateral portals. And uh, the hip arthroscopy. Hip arthroscopy is a technical demanding and instrumentation dependent care with sufficient selection and certain excellent indication limited use in the presence of existing degeneration. The deprivement uh, of the loose body can be done by arthroscopy or make a micro fracture if you have a uh, technique for astablum cartilage, correction of the uh, astablum uh, rim head neck junction and uh, osteoplasty can be done by arthroscopy. This is uh, Alexander Byrne, 2009. Uh, presenting this uh, 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 photo for uh, arthroscopy. And this is uh, open versus arthroscopy. Both have a good result, although patient operating with arthroscopy recover much earlier than with an open uh, arthrotomy. What about other uh, surgical? The uh, periacetabulum osteotomy indicated a structure deformity of the astana with significant retroversion. How uh, if we have uh, ended by uh, arthritis, this is, we will go for hip arthroplasty. What about the post over treatment is very important. The motor control strategy is very important. Hip weakness and postural misalignment, we have to look for it as a post operative treatment. The initial regime is improving the range of motion by uh, two mechanisms, light stretching, layer core stabilization, our tri, uh, transabdominal pelvic floor gluteal activity. This, uh, uh, this type of uh, physiotherapy, pelvic floor muscle and the transverse abdominal activity. This is a uh, pelvic pyramid, consists of the transverse abdominal, multifidus, and the pelvic floor muscle. You have to develop this to overcome, and you have to make it postoperatively for the patient who has suffered from the hip impingement. Advanced regime, uh, functional movement, a squat, lungs, stability and exercise, hopping board, dy uh, desk, impacted exercise and hopping and the landing. You can start it by gradual, uh, step by step until you fully recover. What about rehabilitation? Generally, motor control retraining is more important than strengthening or powerful of individual muscle. What about the complication of this treatment, the femoral neck fracture at risk during femoral femoroplasty? Heterotopic calcification can be occurred. Residual deformity following arthroscopic treatment 
use of multiple fluoroscopic view and affecting the healthy of the surf. In conclusion, femoral acetabulum impingement usually occur in young uh, to middle age, active adult and athletic, can be a uh, 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 limitation to the level of the activity. Conservative treatment is improving the symptom but not the causes. Final solution could be uh, the surgical treatment with very good result. Shukran. I, I will stop uh, sharing the screen. Now we'll go for Professor Dr. Hatim Galan. He is uh, going to speak about uh, uh, arthroscopic of uh, the hip impingement. Father Dr. Hatim. شكرا دكتور بهاء بينا بشكر حضرتك بشكر اساتذتي معانا الدكتور حسن حسيني والدكتور محمد الشافعي بنشكر طبعا جمعيه جراحه العظام على تنظيم الويبينار الجميل ده بنشكر شركه بيكسباير برضو على تنظيم وهيلبينج اس في التنظيم ده حاجه المحاضره اللي حضرتك اديتها طبعا فيري كونكلوسيف يعني فيها كلام كويس جدا على كلينيكال اكزامينيشن على الراديولوجي فانا حاجة يعني فكرت ان احنا ندخل على طول على الارثروسكوبيك مانجمنت ايه اللي احنا ممكن نعمله بالهيب ارثروسكوبي تو تريت الاف اي اي يعني حاجة شرحت الاف اي اي وتفاصيله فدي ندخل على التريتمنت اوف اف اي اي فالحاجة الهيب ارثروسكوبي وي كان يوز تريت اف اي اي دلوقتي احنا كان زي ما حاجة دكتور بهابي قال ان السرجري اوبن سرجري ابتدى بيها العلاج الاف اي اي Later on, uh, arthroscopy started to take over most of the treatment of pathologies uh, of femoral acetabular impingement. So now with hip arthroscopy, I have to say the majority of cases can be dealt with arthroscopically. Even large pincer lesions, I can show for some of the cases I present. We can uh, take away the rim, we can refix the labrum back. So a lot of the lesions of cam or pincer can be treated arthroscopically. Uh, so now we've heard a very nice presentation. The cam. The cam is extra bone on the femoral head and neck. The pincer is extra bone on the establer side. However, the majority of cases are mixed. We find a lot of them is extra bone on the establer side and on the uh, femoral uh, neck side. For the cam lesion, uh, most of the time the lesion is anterolateral between what we call 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock. If we take a clock face to the uh, acetabulum, we find that the fossa points laterally. The patient is uh, sleeping on supine position. Lateral is 12 o'clock, and then anterior 1 and 2, and pure anterior is 3 o'clock. This we describe the hip in this way. Uh, even if it's a right or left, 12 is always lateral, 3 is anterior, and 6 uh, and uh, Six o'clock is medial, nine o'clock is posterior, so that we can all uh, see the description easily. Now, with the extra bone in the cam, you see that we always get a labral tear followed by cartilage injury, and the majority of the pathology is between 12 and 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock is also the passage of the psoas muscle. The psoas between 2 and 3, the psoas muscle passes here, and itself can cause problems with the labrum and some cartilage damage. And this is usually the pathology that we see, and I'll show you in the videos coming. We find the labral tear. We find delamination of the cartilage. This is something very important. I want you to notice with me in the videos which we present, in which the cartilage is, not, is normally stuck to the actual bone. But what happens is not only the labrum uh, sometimes is torn, but sometimes the labrum and cartilage are still intact. We call it that the chondrolabral junction is intact, but the cartilage lifts away. We call it a bubble, a wave sign, lifts away from the acetabulum. So we have a delamination of the cartilage. And this is usually where the pain becomes much more severe with the patient. The patient starts to get the night pain and he complains of pain most of the time, not only with certain sports or with exertion. In case of pincer, there's extra bone. A lot of the time, it's under the anterior periodic spine. That's why we call it subspinous impingement. A lot of the time, we find that this uh, anterior periodic spine is protruding downwards. It, it causes more impingement between the head and neck. And as we've heard that, it causes cartilage damage and contracolesion on the other side. So uh, we, we see these lesions first. 
less commonly uh, on the other side or so recently, especially with a high center edge angle, we started to see the contracollision and indentation in the femoral head on the other side of uh, the head and the stapula. So what can we do with hip arthroscopy? For the cam lesion, we can do cam osteoplasty, which is remove the extra bone. For the pincer, we can recede the pincer. We do a pincer recession, and uh, it's related to the subspinous area, so we do a subspinous uh, decompression. Most of the cases now that we see, I have to say over 95% of the cases have a liberal tear, so we repair them with anchors. And again, the majority of cases, because this is what really hurts the patient, is the chondral delamination or the chondral injury. So this is where the patient comes and is convinced that he needs surgery. So we do cartilage chondroplasty. And finally, we deal with the psoas muscle. If it's causing impingement, we may do a psoas release also at the end of the surgery. So I have to say, so 95% of the cases we're doing one to four, and then maybe another 5% or even 10% we're doing a psoas release of the muscle. So uh, as uh, you've seen, it's important to recognize the, the pathologies on the x-ray. The cam is very easy to see, but it's the pincer retroversion that's slightly more difficult. If we look at the right hip, we can see that the anterior acetabular and posterior acetabular margin meet at the apex of the hip. This is normal. But if we look at the left hip side, we can see that the anterior and posterior acetabular margins cross over. And this is what we call a crossover sign. Uh, and called like a figure of eight. And that tells us that the acetabulum, instead of being antiverted, is looking backwards, causing antiversion. This also is confirmed by the presence of the ischial spike. So if you can see the ischial spine on a centralized EP X-ray, that means that the acetabulum is retroverted. That's why you can see the ischial spine. You should normally not see it. We cannot see it on this normal hip but we can see it on the uh, left side where we have a crossover sign and a prominent ischial spine. Now, how do we know that this hip is centralized, the pelvis? So first of all, you need to order an AP pelvis. You don't order an AP hip, but an AP pelvis. You see the sacrum is in front of the symphysis pubis with an average, average distance of three to four centimeters. This is a well centralized hip. Also, we look at the obturator foramen on both sides and they are equal. So this is a well-centralized pelvis AP. And this is just an, uh, a video to show you why when we have a retroverted acetabulum that we have a figure of eight sign. So if it's an antiverted, we have a normal anterior posterior lip, they meet at the apex. If it's retroverted, then you can see why we have a, an, an, a crossover sign or a figure of eight sign, okay? So this is a sign of pincer retroversion, and this is much more common than global pincer that we see in the cases. A lot of the cases have pincer retroversion with low uh, anterior phylic subs, uh, subspinous impingement. Uh, now, some of the signs that we used to see and uh, know as something very mild, but actually it's a very important sign now of FAI, which is labral ossification, as we can see on here. We have a small ossification in the labrum that usually tells you there is and FAI, and if you can look at this X-ray, you can see there's a crossover sign. Posterior stabular limb, anterior stabular limb, they are crossing. Small crossover, but this is a sign of pincer FAI, and that the labrum has become calcified as an injury of this FAI. Of course, the next big sign is uh, the os acetabuli, which we used to think that this is something not very significant, but I'm going to show you a very nice video to show you how unstable this is to the labrum and then why this is painful. Uh, and if you look again closely to this case, you can see that there's a large cam and then there is this cam. You can imagine that with flexion, it broke the os acetabuli. That's why it's causing patient uh, pain. So uh, this is the first case. And, uh, and if we could look at the X-ray, we can see that there is cam, there's obliteration of the head neck offset, there is cam uh, deformity on both hips but more on the left side. This patient actually came and he had hip arthroscopy on the left side. We're still complaining. So uh, we, after the MRA and the X-ray, we decided to, to go in again and uh, explore the, the pathology and try to deal with uh, the scan pathology. And as you can see here, uh, now once we go in, we start looking at the hyperemia. We lifted the labrum. You can see the delamination of the cartilage. This area is delaminated. You can see the very large redness or very strong redness, which is the uh, bruising. 
This is medially, the medial synovial fold. And then uh, we, uh, we shave some of the capsule to be able to visualize more the cam lesion. And as you can see, the cam lesion is still present. You can see the bump here on the lateral side. And again, we will see here the labrum very strongly bruised. So it's important to look at the kid. You can see that this area is a pathological area. This labrum is being hammered with the fem impingement regularly. So it's causing the pain. And it tells you that here we will find usually the cartilage damage also. And this is the common area. So this is about two, one to two o'clock anterior is the psoas about three o'clock position. So here we've done, used the radio frequency to expose the extra bone on the pincer side on the establum. We have taken the soft tissue away from the head. You can still see how the head is bulging. You can still see why this area is bruised. It's being stuck between the bone on the pincer side. This is all extra bone and the cam on the side causing the labrum not to, uh, to disrupt the labral seal between on the establar side. So it, as you can see that there is uh, extra bone on the pincer side, extra bone on the uh, femoral head area. And this is, uh, this is what's called the damage and we can see the location. So we have to deal with all this. We have to remove the extra bone here. We have to remove the extra bone on the pincer side. And here we're doing the, uh, with the radio frequency, we're delineating exactly where the excess bone from the pincer is and where the subspinous impingement is happening. Uh, after we do that, we start taking away the extra bone, which is the camera section uh, by the uh, abrader. We start taking away the bone gradually. And then how do we know we've reached a proper stage? By the uh, dynamic testing. So we don't only look at the x-ray, but we do dynamic testing to check that there is no more cam that's causing injury to the labrum. And you do that after you've done both the cam and the pincer because receding the pincer backwards takes the labrum back. Therefore, it's, uh, you don't really see the dynamic testing except after you finish both and after you've done the labral repair. So after we've done the cam, after we've receded the labrum, we go inside the hip, the intraarticular part. And as you can see in this patient, he still had a labral tear. There is fraying of the labrum. And here you can see disruption of the chondrolabral junction. This is the labrum, this is the cartilage, and you can see that the cartilage here is a lot of bubbling. So although here the cartilage labrum junction is still intact, but here is disrupted. A lot of the time, even if we see it intact, it is delaminated completely. You can see that's the wave sign in which the whole cartilage is delaminated uh, from the acetabular cartilage uh, and then from the acetabular floor. And as we mentioned, this is the uh, fossa pointing lateral. So it's between 12 and 3 o'clock as most of the cases are. So this is a quite uh, considerable pathology that we have to treat. So after doing the cam, after releasing the pincer recession, taking the bone away, we come to fixing this labrum again and trying to stabilize the uh, labrum, the cartilage. So here we did four anchors. One of them was a double loaded. We use now all suture anchor all the time in the hip. We avoid the metal anchors. Sometimes we speak, but the majority is all suture anchors. We've stabilized the labrum. We've receded all the extra bone that you saw here on the pincer side. Uh, and uh, we, then we do the release. We've done the cartilage. And this is with a cam. You can see that all the extra bone on the lateral side has been removed. And uh, you can then also uh, do the dynamic testing. We check the movement of the hip. We check that it's not impinging on the labrum anymore. And then you have a much more stable labrum and the patient in, uh, in inshallah improves to a better outcome. Actually, this patient uh, came uh, to in clinic yesterday about almost two months now. He's doing uh, very well. So uh, this is another case actually with a female. As uh, Professor Bay mentioned, uh, females, usually we get them at a higher age. Uh, in the 30s and 40s. Uh, the younger age is more common in men, but uh, we get, depends on the activity. For sporty people, we get young age, 17, 18, both male and female. Uh, but uh, in, if it's just pincer female, a lot of them are in a slightly higher age group. So if you look at this, we have an excessive center edge angle. This is a global pincer. The floor of the acetabulum is medial to the ileoscale line. So this is coxa profunda. And this is bilateral. She has bilateral pincer high center edge angle. 
Normally, as uh, Prof. Bahat mentioned, you have to see some extrusion of the head outside the establum. So the normal establum should, should finish here. This is all extra bone on the uh, lateral pincer side. These are more difficult cases because um, the, you have to remove a lot of bone and I'll show you in the video uh, upcoming. So in the CT, again, you see there is too much lateral and posterolateral bone. So here we start to have to remove the bone very much posterior and I'll show you in the next video how we have to go all the way down to not only 12 but 11 and sometimes 10 o'clock to remove the extra bone. Now if you look at the uh, MR arthrography which we usually do for all patients you can see again extra bone uh, you can see some pathology in the labrum some dye going into the uh, as, uh, under the cartilage this is the delamination, excessive. You can see some cystic changes happening in the uh, bone, very lateral area. So this is the uh, arthroscopy. Now you can see the head is here, the acetabulum is on the right, and this is the labrum. Now what we can see that the calcium, the, the bone is very excessive. I'm trying to test where is the soft tissue area of the labrum. Very small labral rim remains. So there is too much bone on the lateral side that only about two or three millimeters of labrum remains. Now, in the old days, we used to remove the bone, remove the labrum, because we think that there is no labrum to preserve. However, uh, more recently, we started to work on preserving the labrum as much as possible. The labrum is extremely important. Now, I think in the last three years, we've rarely excited the labrum. All the cases now has a labrum repair, even in cases like this. So how do we manage cases like this? We go with the radio frequency, we start removing the edge of the labrum and we know that there is some labrum under this lateral edge of bone. So there is, you can see that labrum here is much thicker now, almost a normal labrum becomes very thin here, but we can still preserve this labrum by doing it very carefully and removing the bone very carefully. So we start extra labral pincer recession. That means we remove all the bone that's compressing on the labrum gradually layer by layer until we actually find a good layer of bone at the end. So here we've removed the bone that you can see that there is now there's a full thickness labrum is intact. We have some cartilage holding the labrum and then we've receded all this bone back uh, away where it was impinging on the head and causes all the pathologies that you see. Here is the subspinous area. We work on subspinous decompression. So it's very important, as I said, to preserve the labrum as much as possible. So we receded all the extra bone. Now we have a quite a thick layer of uh, labrum and cartilage that remains. So you can see how much. So this is labrum, now at least a centimeter. Remember when we started, we only have two millimeters of labrum, but after we finished the resection, all the labrum has been exposed. And uh, you can see that all the labrum has been exposed and some of the cartilage also has been decompressed. Uh, and then so, and people here differ in their ways of management. Some people remove the labrum, uh, excite this cartilage, and then put the labrum back. Some people just put the labrum and cartilage together back with anchors. Uh, these two methods are applicable. And we have to remove all the protruding uh, rims of the uh, acetabulum. Now, at the end, you can see there is a, as I said, this is 12 o'clock. It's pointing here. So we removed all the way down to 10 o'clock. This is 12. This is 12 anterior is three. You can see there is a lot of labrum now, very nice uh, layer of labrum uh, remains after we decompressed all the bone, all the way down to 11, even 10 o'clock, where we had to remove this extra bone. And then we inserted our anchors. So at the end, we inserted about three or four anchors in this case. I remember we excised the bone on the cam uh, side again. And uh, you can see now that uh, we flip the labrum with the cartilage. Still, we have a nice seal with the femoral head. And uh, we've maintained uh, this uh, seal by uh, flipping this uh, slightly inverted edges uh, backwards. So another way of doing this, as I mentioned, this is a third case in which uh, when we have a pincer, we, we have a good labrum, but we know that we have a protruding pincer edge and we want to recede the whole edge. Uh, so we don't want to maintain it. Uh, so the uh, option that we have is uh, that we do a labral uh, detachment. We receive the pincer and then we reattach the labrum. So we have the femoral head, the cam, which was done. We have the pincer, which is not done yet. 
So what we do is after the traction, we actually detach with the knife, we detach the labrum all the way. That gives us a nice pincer edge so we can recede as much as we want while still preserving the labrum uh, separate from the cartilage. We remove the extra cartilage and then recede back the uh, pincer edge. So here we've uh, taken away the labrum, we've removed it, and then uh, remaining is the pincer bone, we can see that. Uh, then after recession of the pincer, we insert our anchors and uh, we get at the final uh, stage, which is a uh, repair here, we have three anchors. We do the lasso technique, which gives us a double, uh, double stitch and that gives you a stable edge. And then we at the end, we let the head back into place. We do the dynamic testing. We check that the pincer has been uh, receded all the way back and we check for uh, stability. Uh, this is the os acetabuli that I told you about. Uh, so we, we used to think about the os as something very trivial, but it's not. Here I want you to look at the very clear x-ray. We have very prominent ischial spines on both sides. That tells you there is pincer retroversion on both sides. If you look at this uh, actual acetabular edge, this is the anterior, the posterior acetabular edge. There's a big crossover. This is posterior, this is anterior. There's a large crossover sign to the middle of the acetabulum, which is not like the case we saw in which there was a crossover very high. That tells you that the retroversion is quite high. Not only that, that there is subspinous impingement. You find that the acetabulum is causing subspinous impingement. If we look at the lateral view, very large cam, obliterated head neck offset. Uh, there's a very large cam on both sides. So obviously this patient probably will need bilateral surgery, but he was complaining of the left side and he had the os acetabuli. So I just wanted to show you the os and the MR arthrography is very clear. We can see the os fragment completely separated from the bone. So this is causing the pain. The labrum is attached to the os, as I'll show you in the video now. We have a very large obliterated head neck offset. You can see the cap protruding in many of the cuts. Extra bone that has to be removed. We have to develop the head neck offset again. Now here, I'm just going to show you a video of the os, uh, and we deal with it similar to the pincer like we've seen. This is the labrum. The head is here on the left side. This is the acetabulum on the right side. And look at that, I'm pushing the os. So all this fragment is the os. And you can see now that the acetabulum, intact acetabulum is uh, above and below, but it's a very mobile os acetabulum. And you can now really uh, see why this would be painful because the labrum is completely under it, unstable, as if it's a labral tear and it's moving, there's fluid around it. It's all this os should be removed. So we do the same technique like I showed you, which is the extra labral uh, pincer recession. We remove the os with the burr. We, uh, we smoothen the edges for the pincer above and below, and then we fix the labrum back uh, in its place. So this is uh, what we do for a case like this. Um, uh, lastly is the uh, stabilization, RF stabilization radio frequency or chondroplasty. We do that in a lot of the cases now since we have an unstable cartilage, the wave sign or the delamination. So uh, this is a case after we, we put in the anchors, as you can see the bubble or the delamination of the cartilage. Cartilage is very unhealthy from around 12 o'clock as you see the fossa all the way anterior to about uh, three o'clock. Now the labrum is very stable. That will help prevent further damage to the cartilage, especially if you stabilize the labrum, you remove the cam and you remove the pincer. But however, this is the painful part. So we use the radio frequency to shrink the cartilage in this area. However, we also do testing. So we push it again. We find if we find a little bit more movement still present, we may do a little bit more of chondroplasty uh, or radio frequency, uh, we lower the radio frequency at this age, at this stage to shrink the cartilage to get more stability with the labrum uh, uh, repair. Then you get much uh, nice pain relief uh -huh. to the patient <laughs> after <laughs> the operation. <laughs> so uh, now we can see here on the uh, right uh -huh. side that the uh, the cam has been uh, done. The cam has been done, and then the, we also do the dynamic testing at the end. We let the head back into place. We test it after we've stabilized here the uh, labrum. So all these components are very important. The cam resection, the pincer recession to let the labrum uh, not impinge between both sides, 
has to be relaxed. And then we deal with the cartilage, which is the really painful part of the uh, painful part of the pathology. And this is, uh, as you can see, nice cam resection. You can see the psoas muscle here. It's not causing impingement, but in another case, I'll show you next, there is impingement. So actually, it is a tight psoas here. Uh, so we, we probably, I think in this case, at the end, I, I released it because there is some inflammation in the psoas muscle. So uh, lastly, this is my last part, is the psoas release. If we find that any uh, the psoas is impinging on the labrum, uh, we are usually operating in the peripheral compartment in about 30, 40 degrees of flexion. If the psoas muscle at that stage is touching the labrum, uh, usually if we extend, it will really impinge on the labrum, and sometimes the tear is related to the psoas muscle. So we do the psoas release. As you know that at this area above the labrum, the psoas muscle is composed of 60% muscle and only 40% tendon. So we only release the tendinous part, so we still have a good muscle power later on. However, that changes the rehab slightly for the patient for the first month, but later on he regains the psoas power uh, well and they don't have any complaints with that. So in summary, uh, as you saw with hip arthroscopy, we can do a lot now for FAI. The CAM is easily done, the CAM osteoplasty. Pincer recession uh, and subspinous decompression is commonly done, but even now for lateral pincer, not only retroversion, but for lateral pincer, we're able to decompress all the way laterally and posterolateral and get the labrum back in place. Labral repair is an integral part of the procedure. Most of the cases uh, get labral repair with anchors. And uh, again, most of them will get a chondroplasty, uh, chondroplasty a radio frequency of the cartilage. As I said, in some cases, we do a psoas release according to the testing inside. So thank you very much for your attention, and I'm happy to receive any questions. Thank you, Dr. Hatem. A very nice presentation, and um, uh, we are always enjoying the videos. And now we'll uh, go for Professor Hassan Al Husseini, is my colleague and my uh, uh, spirit, and always we see each other uh, uh, outside Cairo, more than in Cairo and uh, in Egypt. Uh, he is going to speak about Abbasqan necrosis. Welcome, Professor Dr. Hassan Hussein. مستاذ حضرتك تفتح المايك دكتور حسن كده كويس كده فتح تمام يا فندم تمام يا فندم سلام حضرتك I'm going to deliver a talk on a vascular necrosis of the femoral head هو بيقلب من عندي ولا من عنده من عند حضرتك يا دكتور بيقلبش دوس على ايه Uh, by definition, a vascular necrosis, or what we call osteonecrosis, is a disease in which a portion of the femoral head dies due to microvascular injury, with subsequent reparative and generative changes. The vascular necrosis may be traumatic due to microvascular injury, or non-traumatic due to microvascular injury. The traumatic cases usually result from one of two conditions, either dislocation of the hip, the incidence from 10 to 25 percent, and the incidence is increased if dislocation is neglected. The second common cause is fracture neck femur. The incidence between 15 and 50 percent, depending on the type of fracture, grading, uh, garden grading, 
time before treatment, if it is delayed or not, accuracy of reduction and stability of fixation. But the non-traumatic osteonecrosis, first described by Alexander Monroe, pathological changes were described by Jane Crovey Higher. The incidence in USA between 10 to 20,000 per year. Most of the cases are idiopathic, but some cases are secondary to an underlying cause. And these causes are a lot of causes that may proceed, that may end with osteonecrosis, steroid therapy, alcoholism, hemoglobinopathy, dysparism, liver disease, gout, pancreatitis, systemic lupus, hyperlipidemia, Gaucher disease, Cushing syndrome, renal transplantation and defective coagulation. I'll talk about some of these causes. First, steroid therapy. This is common after big doses over a long period, continuous or intermittent. The incidence range between 15 to 36 percent, the age between 15 and 65 years. It may be unilateral or bilateral, and it may be multifocal, affecting more than one side. The mechanism through which cortisone can induce osteonecrosis, there is the fat embolism. Because cortisone can mobilize the fat in subcutaneous tissue, leading to hyperlipidemia. With this will end with fatty liver, hepatic cells rupture, release of fat in the blood, and then this fat will lodge in the small arterioles. One milliliter of fat can produce 10 million fat emboli of this size. The second mechanism may be vasculitis caused by cortisone, which causes cell wall necrosis or defective coagulation, which is controversial. What favors osteonecrosis in steroid users? Patients with hyperlipidemia, depending on the duration, severity, and the frequency of this condition, pre existing hyperlipidemia or coexistent disorder. What favors embolization in the bone? Because the arteries in the subchondral bone are in the arteries, they have tortuous course, and in addition, the mechanical stress falling on this side. The systemic lupus erythematosus, uh, it may be caused by cortisone therapy, which is given in big doses in systemic lupus and vasculitis also. In renal transplantation, the incidence of a vascular necrosis between 3 and 40 percent. The causes are cortisone therapy, hypercalcemia, hypophosphatemia, hyperparathyroidism, or the toxins from the kidney. All these conditions occur after renal transplantation. Alcoholism. The incidence between 17 and 75, depending on the amount. If the amount is less than 400 milliliter, there is increase threefold. If it is more than 400, there is 11-fold increase. The age, average age is 38, more common in males. It may be bilateral, and it may be multifocal, affecting more than one side. The mechanism of alcoholism, Alcoholism causes fatty liver with hyperlipidemia, fat accumulation in the osteocytes, hypertrophy and cell death, direct toxic effect of osteocytes on the osteocytes. The fifth condition is this disease. The incidence between one percent to sixty percent, usually multifocal, and this parisma occurs in divers and during flying. The mechanism, it may be ischemic or non-ischemic. The ischemic may be embolic or non-embolic. Embolic may be gas, fat, or thrombus emboli. The gas bubble emboli, when during diving, if the person is subjected to high pressure, the nitrogen, which forms about five, uh, 79% of the air, dissolves in the marrow fat. It is more it is five times more soluble in the fat. And then, if the pressure is decreased gradually, there will be gradual release of nitrogen bubbles and the adequate elimination with respiration. Yes, may the gas bubbles 
and this will result in adequate decompression or asymptomatic condition. But if, on the contrary, there is sudden decrease of pressure, there will be sudden release of nitrogen bubbles, the body will be unable to eliminate these gas bubbles adequately, and then gas bubble emboli will occur, resulting in dyspareism. The fat emboli, another mechanism, the expanding gas bubble in the marrow will disrupt the fat cells, the liver will release the fat, or it may adhere to the blood lipids to form emboli. Thrombus. Gas bubble interfere with the blood, inter interact with the blood, resulting in clumping of RBCs and platelets, coalescence of lipids, resulting in the formation of thrombus and shower emboli. The non-embolic ischemia. It is due to extravascular causes, the gas bubble compress the vessels within the bone, or intravascular, the gas bubble will cause intimal damage, or the gas bubble blood interaction, resulting in release of active vasoactive substances, causing vasomotor changes, active Hegman factor, resulting in coagulation, or hemoconcentration, resulting in coagulation. In addition, there is non-ischemic factor. Fluid shift from osmotic changes, Collagen changes from high oxygen tension or autoimmunity. The aggravating factors, magnitude of pressure, of course, number of exposures because it has cumulative effect, rapid compression and the inadequate decompression, obesity because the obese have more fat and more liver fat. This example, sickle cell anemia, which results from inheritance of hemoglobin S, which is abnormal, cause sickle cell hemoglobin with abnormal hemoglobin S. Here, the RBCs are elongated or sickle, basal mingle, causing the chronic anemia with occasional crisis. If there is inheritance of abnormal hemoglobin S with the normal hemoglobin A, this results in sickle cell trait. The persons are normal and the RBC is sickle only under hypoxia. Bone necrosis is rare. Inheritance of hemoglobin S with any other abnormal hemoglobin results in allied hemoglobinopathy. What's the mechanism of sickle cell anemia? During hypoxia, the hemoglobin S comes out of solution because it is 100 times less soluble than hemoglobin A, forming crystals or tactoids. This will elongate the cells, causing sickling. Factors causing the blood stasis or hypoxia aggravate this tendency. Sickling increases the blood viscosity, clumping of cells, blocking of capillaries, more hypoxia, and then vicious circle resulting in bone necrosis. Now, how can we diagnose clinically the avascular necrosis? Actually, we only suspect if there is risk factor. We have to put the risk factors mentioned before in mind when we uh, encounter a case of deep groin pain or limited motion, which are non-specific complaint. The radiological diagnosis is important. The X-ray early in condition, there may be cystic changes in the head, sclerosis, crescent sign, which is the necrotic area collapse. But in advanced cases, there will be decreased joint space width and osteophytes, and definite osteoarthritis. This is the crescent sign, and this is the collapse. The size of the lesion can be measured by what we call curve ball angle. The angle point in the of the head and then extend the two lines to the edges of the necrotic area. If this area, if this angle is more than 200, this means that any bone disturbing, preserving surge like osteotomy is going to fail because the estabular cartilage is worse and there is large necrotic segment in the weight bearing area, which will not be corrected even after osteotomy. MRI changes are determined by bone marrow cell death five days after ischemia, yani early after ischemia. 
sensitivity 88 to 100% increased by gadolinium. The MRI shows either peripheral band of low, low signal intensity on T1 and T T2 corresponding to necrotic area, or the double line sign or double ring sign. Necrotic area is surrounded by concentric rims of low and high signal intensity in T2. This is the double line sign. Scintigraphy or bonus scan using technician 99M methylene diphosphonate. It is less sensitive than MRI. It appears as hot spots of high density surrounded by a cold spot. Changes occur later than MRI, 10 to 14 days after ischemia. The classification or staging of a vascular necrosis is very important. Fika and Arlet in 1962 described this staging depending on the X-ray only. Stage one, normal X-ray, but complaint, of course. Stage two, starting sclerosis and cystic changes of the femoral head in the X-ray. Stage three, there is collapse. And stage four, definite osteoarthritis. In 1950, uh, in FICA described this modified staging. To simplify this, this staging, stage zero means if there is a vascular cross in one hip, we suspect a vascular cross in the other hip. This stage zero. Stage one, there, is, there are symptoms, but the X-ray is normal. MRI findings are positive. Stage two, here start the changes in the brain X-ray, cysts, sclerosis, crescent sign in the X-ray. Stage three, collapse and sequester information. And stage four is definite osteoarthritis. Steinberger classified or staged uh, vascular necrosis into six stages. Stage one, each stage has three subtypes, A, B, C. A, if the lesion is affecting less than 15% of the head, moderate between 15 and 30. If more than 30, it is severe. In stage one, the normal X-ray finding, but abnormal bone scan and MRI. In stage two, there is in addition, cystic and sclerotic changes in the X-ray. Stage three, there is subchondral collapse, but without flattening. Stage four, there is flattening of the femoral head. Stage five, there is joint narrowing. And stage six, there is advanced degenerative changes. Differential diagnosis from transient osteoporosis of the hip, which is common in the women during the third trimester, in men between the fifth and sixth decades, the MRI shows edema of the upper end femur, two to five percent to develop osteonecrosis. What about the treatment? We start with conserved treatment. The first is protected weight bearing or non weight bearing. This is actually is nonsense because it is very difficult to ask the patient to avoid weight bearing for a long time, and the prognosis is not known. There are some drugs which are under experiment or under trials, like the alendronates, antifibrinolytics, lipid lowering agents, antihypertensive. All these drugs are still femur halit at tagarub walaysat muakkadat al mafoul. The electromagnetic field is used sometimes to retard bone resorption and enhance repair retard the loss of structural integrity and, and prevent collapse. It is used alone or after core decompression. Success rate in early stages is 65%, not above the new SA. Hyperbaric oxygen enhances the osteogenesis and angiogenesis, and they claim they have good results after hyperbaric oxygen. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy also is tried it increases bone healing and enhance new vascularization, new vascularization. Now we come to surgical treatment. Of course, the first condition is for 
The aim of cortical compression is to lower the intraosseous pressure, remove the sclerotic rim around the osteonecrosis, اللي هي السياج اللي بيمنع وصول الدم الى المنطقه اللي فيها نيكروزس تو امبروف ذا فاسكولار فلو بريفنت كولابس اوف كورس اند الفييت بين ذا ميثود فيري سيمبل وي ايدنتيفاي ذا اوستونيكروزس باي اكس راي اند ام ار اي اند ذن ستارت ذا بروسيدور ابوف ذا ليسر ترو كانتر وي انسيرت ريمر 9 ملم تو ميك وان كور اور اكوردنج تو كيم 2003, they do multiple holes, small holes of size 3.2 millimeter. And then we stop 5 millimeter from the surface. The results are better for small lesions and the early stage one and two, the success rate in stage one about 84% and 65 in stage two. The controversy here comes to graft or not, after doing a core decompression. Are we going to put cancellous graft after core decompression? The proponents of this procedure assume that the grafting speeds the bone healing by osteoinductive and osteoconductive process. But the proponents assume that the grafting will violate decompression. decompression the bone grafting, which are used either non-vascularized or vascularized, may be cancellous bone graft, or strut graft, like taking part of the fibula or iliac bone in the core tract, success rate from 30 to 70 percent. Vascularized graft, either free fibular graft and uh, based on anastomosis to the ascending branch of the lateral femoral circumflex vessels, like this or the iliac graft. Here a window is made at the head neck junction. We remove necrotic bone and put iliac block based on the ascending branch of lateral femoral circumference vessels. The muscle medical graft, which was used in the past for the treatment of non-united fracture neck femur. Here the quadratus femoris insertion. We take the quadratus femoris with a piece of bone and put it in the uh, a window made at the head neck junction after removing the necrotic bone and fix it with a screw. And uh, the use of bone morphogenetic protein, we use a low implant composite made of cortical bone like the fibula, they're fused with bone morphogenetic protein and the non collagenous protein. The bone marrow injection, because the mesenchymal cell stem cells are low are very low in the upper end part of the femur to allow repair of after osteonecrosis. But injection of the bone marrow can supply this necrotic area with stem cells which are capable of enhancing bone repair. The second method is osteotomy. The aim of osteotomy is to shift the osteonecrotic area from weight bearing to non weight bearing and to decrease intramedullary pressure by lowering the venous hypertension. The methods either varus or valgus osteotomy or rotational osteotomy according to the site of the lesion. This is rotation osteotomy and this is varus osteotomy. Indications of osteotomy in young adults less than 45 years, herbal angle less than 200, no chronic use of steroids, steroids recurrence no collapse, and no osteoarthritic changes. And the third is arthroplasty. Can we do bipolar arthroplasty? Actually, there is high risk of proterosio stabina due to loss of the shock absorption property of the femoral head and the neck. And in this way, bipolar is not indicated. But the total hip is the ideal method for the treatment of osteonecrosis with collapse or osteoarthritis, stage three or four FICA. Also in the old age with extensive lesion or with or without collapse. The factors affecting the treatment choice is the extent of the lesion, relation to the weight bearing area, collapse more than two millimeters and a stabular changes. وشكرا جزيلا لحسن استماعكم
شكرنا دكتور حسن very nice presentation and uh, very concise cover everything and uh, uh, I think you, uh, you raise a lot of questions and I think uh, uh, at the end we will uh, receive the questions it can, can be right and now we are coming for uh, what you call مسك الختام أخونا العزيز الأستاذ الدكتور محمد الشافعي آه طبعا هو وكيل الكلية ومن الناس الأعزاء علينا وهو من من ليهم الباع الكبير في جراحة العظام وعضو جامعة جراحة العظام هو هيكلمنا على كيس بيزنج ديسكشن اللي هي بريفنشن اوف افاسكولا كروزيس ويز فراكشر النون ان فراكشر نيكوفيما اتفضل دكتور محمد شكرا جزيلا لي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الاول انا احب اشكر دكتور بقى بي سات رئيس والبانل وجمعيه جراحه العظام على المجهود المكثف اللي عاملاه في الكونتينوس ميديكال اديوكيشن سبونسرد النهارده بشركه انسباير مع الشكر ارحب طبعا بالساده الزملاء الحضور وخصوصا ان هو النهارده انا شايف ان في حوالي ات ذيس تايم حوالي خمسة أو ستة أورثوبيديك ويبينارز رانينج إن ذا سيم تايم وفي عشرات الويبينار ليكتشرز في خلال الأسبوع ده فالحمد لله يعني كل واحد بيدلو بدلو أنا كان طلب مني إن أنا أي كونتريبيوت في الجزء ده بس الحقيقة فيري شورتلي فأنا حبيت بدل ما أحضر محاضرة أقدم حاجة كلينيكال ولما كان لقيت ان في التوك عن الفاسكولار نكروز اخترت حاله من الاسبوع اللي فات احب اشارككم فيها وهي اساسا الكلام على هاو تو بريفنت اي في ان في حالات الفراكشر نيك فيمر النون يونيون الانسدنس في اليانج بيشنتس حوالي 1 ثيرد تلت العيانين فراكشر نيك فيمر ما بيحصل لهم نون يونيون الحاجات دي بتبقى اساسا بيزد على بيشنت ريليتد زي الفراكشر مورفولوجي فيرتيكال او كده والانرجي بريزنت ريبريزنتد باي هاي ديسبليسمنت اي كومينيشن او سيرجن ديبندنت اللي هي البور ريدكشن اند بور فيكسيشن بور فيكسيشن سواء كان بور تشويس اوف امبلانت او بور بوزيشننج اوف ذا امبلانت الحالات دي ان احنا بنحتاج لو حابين نحافظ على الهيب بالذات كل ما كان السن اصغر ان بنحاول في الهيب سالفج بروتوكول سواء كان العيان فيكسد انترنالي او نجلكتد او بان متاخر الحاجات دي بتانكلود اربع حاجات اولا ريفيجن للانترنال فيكسيشن ده بيستلزم ريموفال اوف ذا امبلانتس بعدين ريفيكسيشن يوزنج فيريس امبلانتس اي فيكسيشن تقدر ان انت توصل بيه لاستابيليتي بعد الجود ريدكشن على حسب ما يدي لك الديفكت اللي في الهيد اللي باقي من بعد الفيلد فيكسيشن الاولاني. ثالثا الاوستيوتومي ورابعا البون جرافتنج. الفالكس اوستيوتومي الحقيقه بيموديفاي البايوميكانكس بتاعت الهيب ده كويس انه بيحول الفيرتيكال فراكشر الى ترانسفيرس فراكشر وبيحول الشير انتو كومبريشن لكن برضو بنشوف حاجات كثيره ابنورماليتي في البايوميكانكس ممكن تبقى لها باد امبليكيشنز بعد كده. لكن هو بنحتاجينه زي ما قلنا في الفيرتيكال فراكشر لو في فيروس مال الاينت مش قادر يصلح الفيروس اللي ابتدت اللي حصلت مثلا لو العيان نجلكتد او اولد ولو في اوبيس لم شورتنج الجرافتنج الجرافتنج ده بيشمل يا اما نون فاسكولارايزد فيبلا جرافت او فاسكولارايزد فيبلا او بيديكال بون جرافت الفيبرال جرافت الحقيقه النون فاسكولارايزد في ناس كتير بتحبها وبتثق ان فيها آه يعني آه مورفوجينيك فاكتور جامده لكن هي ستراكشرال آه جرافت آه الفاسكولارايزد التكنيك بتاعها ديفيكالت محتاج ناس اكسبرتيز آه في المايكرو سيرجري الدونر موربيديتي عاليه Complications سواء في الدونر او الريسيبيان سايد عاليه وبعدين ممكن جدا يبقى في ريفيوزال باي ذا بيشنت ان العيان يقول لك لا انا مش هاخد 
افتح رجلي كلها واخد مايكرو سيرجري 8 ساعات علشان اصلح النون يونيون بتاع الهيب البيديكال جرافت هي اللي بتوصل السيركليشن من نير باي دي عندنا نوعين الفيسل بيديكال او الماسل بيديكال الفيسل بيديكال زي دي اللي احنا هتعمد على الاكسترنال سيركونفلكس اليك وناخد نسلك الارتري والفين وناخد بون بلوك على بيزد على الارتري والفين وبعدين نحطهم في طرف في النيك فيمر كروسنج كروسنج ذا فراكشر سايد بعد الفيكسيشن دي الفيسل لكن الماسل بيديكال ماتش ايزير مش محتاج ان انا اسلك الارتري والفين وريسك ان هو يحصل فيلير في اي فيهم وان انا اعديها من تحت الانجوينال ليجمنت لكن الماسل بيديكال اشهرهم الكوادريتاس فيمورس اللي اتقالت باي مير وقال ان وطلع ريزالتس كويسه جدا تصل نير 90% يونيون لكن دي بليز بوستير ان ذا فيمورال نيك عشان دي ممكن تو كومبرومايز ذا امبورتنت فاسكولار سبلاي اللي هو ماشي اصلا بوستيرلي ان سبساينوفيال ريتينكولار ارتري يبقى انا ممكن اي ريسك الارتري اللي هو يا دوبك الهيد شغال عليه ثانيا ان انا محتاجه سوباين بوزيشن ما اقدرش اعملها في سوباين بوزيشن بعملها في لاترال بوزيشن ده انترفير مع الفيكسيشن الثاني اللي انا هعمله وساعات بعملها في برون بوزيشن او ناس بتعملها في برون بوزيشن وبعدين دي تمنعني ان انا استخدم فراكشر تيبل لو انا هعمل فيكسيشن ثاني في حاله تكون تريكي او ديفيكت. فتوصف حاجات ثانيه فاسكولارايزد ماسل بيديكال بون جرافت اذر ذان الكوادريتس فيموريس منها السارتوريس تاخد الانسيرشن بتاع السارتوريس بالحته بالماسل بحته من الانسيرشن او تنسور فاشياتا او جلوتيس ميدياس او جلوتيس مينيمس او الاليوسوس او فاسكولارايزد ايلياك بون جرافت. معظم الحاجات دي كانت موصوفه ثرو سميث بيترسون ابروتش بنطلع اللاترال كوتينيس نيرف في الثاي وبعدين بنمشي مع السارتوريوس وبعدين هنا بنعمل تي انسيجن اوف ذا كابسول الترانسفيرس لينك نير ذا استابلم عشان احافظ على البيزل الرينج حوالين النيك اوف ذا فيمر الارتيريال رينج وبعدين بعمل تراف من باخد السارتوريوس او التنسو فاشيلاتا من الاليا كريست واحولها الى التراف واثبتها باي سكرو الحاله اللي انا عايز اقدمها شاب 23 سنه افريج بيلد كار اكسيدنت في ليبيا وبرزنتد بعد ست شهور بالمنظر ده مش باين اذا كان اليونيون بروجريسنج ولا لا مش باين اي ايفيدنس اوف ايباسكرونيك روز متثبت بالنيل ده ولقينا الصوره دي معاه من البوست اوبريتيف ايميديتلي بوست اوبريتيف في دبل كونتور ات ذا فراكشر سايد بس مش واضح اذا كان في جاب او ايه المنظر بعد ست شهور من المنظر ده قررنا ان احنا ناخده عملنا اللاترال لقينا ان السكروز فيري انتيريورلي الهيد والنيك خدنا العمليات لما خدنا انترنال روتيشن فيو سكريننج لقينا ان الفراكشر اوبفيسلي كومبليتلي ان يونايتد والحقيقه ده السي تي ما ساعدناش كتير في العيان ده والام ار اي رغم انه اتعمل وما كانش يعني الارتفاكت عاليه لكن ما بينش ام ار اي لكن الارتفاكت ما كانش يجزم ان ما فيش اي في ان الفكرة اللي بروباجيت او بقدمها ان احنا السميث بيترسون ابروتش هيعاكس حاجات كتيرة جدا انا ممكن لو البيديكال ماسل جراف دي كلها اقدر اخدها ما اخدها بواتسون جونز ابروتش ان انا هقدر اي ريموف الميتال اي ريفايز الفيكسيشن واستعمل البيديكال جراف فده اللي عملناه في العيان ده ده الانسيجنز اللي كان متركب بيها وده الانسيجن اللي عملناه واتسون جونز ابروتش دي الفاستس لاتراليس ودي جلوتيس مينيموس تنسو فاشيا لاتر قدام وي ديفلوب ذا انترفال تو ذا كابسول اند وي ريموف من ذا سيم ابروتش ذا نيل اند بيكوز ذا سكروز ان ذا اوف ذا نيل ان ذا كفالوميدالري سكروز وير فيري انتيريورلي اند سوبيريور We found that the most appropriate place is the posterior 
سوب سوري ذا بوسترو انفيريور كوادرنت عشان كده فعملنا فيكسيشن باي دي سي اس ويز تراينجليشن وخدنا التنسور فاشيا لاتا ويز ايليا كريست بيديكال جرافت وحطيناها في التراف في الفيمورال نيك وثبتناها باي ذيس سكرو لما ثبتنا الدي سي اس ده دي سي اس وده التراينجليشن كانسيلا سكروز ديز ديفكت ده اللي هو كان موجود بتاع المسمار بتاع الجاما نيل اللي كان راكب وده الحقيقه احنا ما شلناش منه حاجه هو كان مفتوح كده وانا لقيت ان في كل الحالات اللي شفتها فيلد فيكسيشن اوف تراكشر نيك فيمر في حاجتين في ريتروفيرشن وفي انتيرو بوزيشننج اوف في اكسيرفيتيشن يعني في with retroversion of the head and uh, anterior positioning of the screws with very poor perches. احنا خدنا الطرف ده اللي هو كان معمول اساسا وسعناه شويه وجبنا التنسور فاشيا لاتا وحطيناها اكروس ذا فراكشر سايد وحطينا الجرافت. ده النيل اوسكلاب نيل رولز رايس ديفايس لكن كان محطوط فري anterior. ده الفيكسيشن وده اللاترال فيو بوستيرير المسمار الاولاني كان هنا اهو في الحته دي فيكسيشن كان فيري جود اكشولي ات ذا تايم اوبريشن ده الترانجليشن سكرو وده السكرو فيكسينج ذا بيديكال جرافت ثرو واتسون جونز ابروتش وده الشورت فولو اب لان ده العين ده كان معمول فيري ريسنت دي انا لقيت الصوره دي كده فور فان وانا بدور على الحالات بتاعت النون يونيون العيان ده كان عيان قديم جدا من قبل الريكون يمكن وكان في 3 اي او سكروز مكسورين واحد مك... واحد سليم واحد بنت وواحد مكسور ده مكان المسمار الثاني المسمار ده كان فيري ديفيكالت ان احنا نحوشه فاحنا ركبنا ال 130 ديجري انجل ديفايس فيكس انجل ديفايس عشان ياخد اليو بروفايل ياخد المسمار ده في حضنه ياخده في الوسط بين 3 ليمز وعملنا الاستيوتومي اند اتيونايتس. سو اي يمكن محتاج تفكر في الاوبشنز كتيره جدا لو عيان سسبكت انه هيحصل له ايفاس فور نكروز فيري ديسبلايزد او كوميونيوتد او اولد ان انت او فيري يونج ان انت محتاج تعمل جارد اجينست الايفاس فور نكروز باي بيتيكال كرافت عندك اوبشنز كتيره لوكالي ممكن تستعمل واتسون جونز ابروتش. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. شكرا يا دكتور محمد طبعا تفكير عاقل يعني طبعا الايام دي طبعا البهارات كله بيجري على طول على الارثو بلاست يعني ولكن كويس تفكير عاقل ان احنا نحافظ على النورمال اناتومي والنورمال بون ارشيتكتور بتاعت العيان وطبعا بيتر بيتر هيلد فراكشرز زان ارثو بلاست طبعا ندعو شركه كل الدكاتره يعني يحط اي حد يحب يحط اي اسئله ممكن يحطها لنا في الكيو كيو اند اي واحنا بعد ما نستمع لشركه انسباير هنبتدي نجاوب على الاسئله ان شاء الله تمنياتي لكم اتفضل دكتور اسامه دكتور عمرو اتفضل يا دكتور مع حضرتك شكرا شكرا جزيلا دكتور بهاء شكرا لكل الساده السبيكرز اللي شرفونا النهارده بالبارتيسيبيشن بتاعهم الرائع والمحاضرات القيمه الحقيقه اللي قدمها لنا النهارده في اليوم الثاني من سلسله محاضرات ذا هيب ستيت اوف ذا ارت واللي يمكن بداناها الاسبوع الماضي ومكملين ان شاء الله على مدار الاسبوعين القادمين يمكن في البدايه حابب اشكر الجمعيه المصريه لجراحه العظام الحقيقه على الجهد المبذول والرائع خلال الفتره الماضيه من خلال الكورسز والبينارز اللي بتقدمها واللي بيقدمها كوكبه من اساتذه جراحه العظام في مصر. ويمكن بشكرهم ايضا على اتاحتهم الفرصه لانسباير فارما لانها تكون بارتر بارتنر من البروجكت ده. يمكن في البدايه انسباير فارما احنا ايجيبشن فارماسيوتيكال كومباني موجودين في السوق المصري فور اولموست 15 ييرز لينا اكتر من 15 انوفيتيف برودكت ويمكن ده اكتر نقطه حابب اكد عليها يمكن انسباير فارما بتهتم دايما ان البرودكتس بتاعتها تبقى انوفيتيف برودكت ويتش اد فاليو للبيشنت المصري والهيلث كير كوميونتي في مصر 
يمكن النهارده بقدم لحضراتكم ذا موست ريسنت نيو اورال انتي كواجولانت فروم انسباير فارما وهو البيكسا سباير بيكسا باين 2.5 ملي جرام بيفنج ذا واي ويز كلين باور بيفنج ذا واي ريجاردنج ذا سوبيريور افيكاسي اوف بيكسا سباير اند كلين باور ريجاردنج ذا هاي سيفتي بروفايل اوف بيكسا باين اور بيكسا سباير فيرسس اذر انتي كواجولانت يمكن احنا بناكد دايما على الامبورتنت رول اوف انتي كواجولانت افتر الاورثوبيديك سيرجري بنلاقي ان ويزاوت في تي اي بروفيلاكسس الدي في تي انسيدنس في الميجر اورثوبيديك سيرجري بيوصل ل 60% واللي ممكن يتحول الى حالات فيتال بالمونري امبوليزم واللي نسبتها بتوصل ل 3% افتر الالكتيف هيب ريبليسمنت وال 7% افتر الهيب فراكشر سيرجري يمكن معظم الحالات دي ودي مشكله الحقيقه بتكون اسيمبتوماتيك بنلاقي ان كل وان بيشنت افتر التوتال ني ريبليسمنت في قصاده هاف ساينس اوف في تي اي في قصاده 21 بيشنت اسيمبتوماتيك ويزاوت اني ساينس اند افري وان بيشنت هاف ساينس اوف في تي اي افتر التوتال هيب ريبليسمنت ذير ار فايف بيشنت ويزاوت اني ساينس اسيمبتوماتيك المشكله الحقيقه ان الحالات الاسيمبتوماتيك بروكسيمال دي في تي دي از ذا سورس اوف ذا موست فيتال بالمونري امبولاي يمكن على مدار السنين اللي فاتت كان في اكتر من ريجيمنت هاز بين ستاديد اند اند يوزد بدايه من البلاسيبو مرورا بالاسبرين او الوارفرين او انتهاءا باللو موليكولار ويت هيبرين اللي كان بيقدم ريلاتيف ريسك ريدكشن اولموست 52% على الرغم من كده الحقيقه الا انه كان له كتير من الليميتيشنز سبيشالي في الكلينيكال براكتس يمكن على قائمه هذه الليميتيشنز كونه سبكيوتينيوس ادمنستريشن او سبكيوتينيوس انجكشن بيكون انكونفينينت خاصه للاوت بيشنت العيان بعد ما بيخرج من المستشفى بيلاقي صعوبه ان هو يكمل على الانجكشن بلس ذا ادفيرس سكين رياكشنز ات انجكشن سايد بلس السايد افكت اللي بيكون مصاحب للهيبرينز ان جنرال سواء اللومولوكلار ويت هيبرين او الانفراكشنيتد هيبرين وهو الهيبرين انديوس ثرومبوسايتوبينيا ويمكن عشان كده ظهور النوفل اورال انتي كواجولانتس كان طفره كبيره في الثيرابيوتيك اريا دي لانها بمنتهى البساطه حلت كل المشاكل اللي كانت موجوده مع الهيبرنس كونها اورال ادمنستريشن فبقت مور كونفينينت سواء للان بيشنت او الاوت بيشنت برضه بتقدم لحضراتكم الرابيد اونست اوف اكشن ذا سيم از الانجكشن بلس الميكانيزم اوف اكشن بتاعها ويتش انهبت بوث الفري اند كلوت باوند اكتيف فاكتور 10 فبالتالي بتكون سوبيريور عن اللوم ليكر ويت هيبرين بلس كمان ان هي هاز ليميتد اور نو بوتنشال ان انديوسنج الهيبرين انديوسد ثرومبوسايتوبينيا ومن هنا بقدم لحضراتكم النهارده البيكس سباير ابيكسابان 2.5 ملي جرام والحقيقه اللي اتعملت عليه ا لوت اوف ميجا ترايلز على بول كبيره من البيشنتس يمكن هنذكر منها ادفانس تو ترايل اللي اتنشرت في اللانسيت سنه 2010 كانت على اكتر من 3000 بيشنت كانت يعني بتقارن الابيكسابان 2.5 ملي جرام توايز ديلي فيرسس الانوكسابارين 40 ملي جرام وانس ديلي الحقيقه كانت نتيجه الترايل ان الابيكسابان كان بيوفر كونفينينت اند مور افكتيف الترناتيف للانوكسابارين 40 ملي جرام ويزاوت انكريز ذا بليدنج يمكن الترايل الثانيه هي ادفانس 3 ترايل كانت برضه بتقارن الابيكسابان فيرسس الانوكسابارين افتر الهيب ريبليسمنت سيرجري ودي اتنشرت في نيو انجلاند جورنال اوف ميديسن سنه 2010 وكانت معموله على اكثر من 5400 بيشنت كانت نتيجه الترايل ان الابيكسابان كومبيرد ويز الانوكسبارين اسوشيتد ويز لوور ريتس اوف في تي اي ويزاوت انكريز ليدنج يمكن ده بولت اناليسيز الحقيقه كان عباره عن ميرج ما بين التو ترايلز ادفانس 2 اند ادفانس 3 ترايل نشر في جورنال اوف بون اند جوينت سيرجري سنه 2012 كان بيقول ان الابيكسابان بيقلل حالات الميجور في تي اي بنسبه اكثر من 50% فيرسس الانوكسبارين 40 ملي جرام وان معظم الحالات دي كانت اسيمبتوماتيك لان بنلاقي السوبيريورتي اوف ابيكسابان زادت كمان في حالات الاسيمبتوماتيك بروكسيمال دي في تي اللي قللها فيرسس الانوكسبارين بنسبه اكثر من 66% ويمكن بقى النقطه المهمه واللي بحاول اركز عليها هي ذا موست فيلد كومبليكيشن من الانتي كواجولانت بالذات للبيشنت بعد الاورثوبيديك سيرجري هو السيرجيكال سايد بليدنج واللي يمكن العيان بيخاف منه جدا الابيكسابان بيقلل السيرجيكال سايد بليدنج بنسبه 25% فيرسس الانوكسبارين 40 ملي جرام وعشان كده كان الكونكلوجن بتاع الميتا اناليسيس بيقول ان الابيكسابان ريجيمين هاد ا فيفرابل بالانس اوف انتي ثرومبوتيك بينيفيت تو بليدنج ريسك كومبيرد ويت انوكسبارين 40 ملي جرام وانس ديلي. يمكن مقارنه بالاذر نواكس ده ميتا اناليسيس كان عباره عن كان بيقارن كل الترايلز بين النواكس والستاندرد ثيرابي او الانوكسبارين 
و12 في الجورنال اوف ارثروبلاستي سنه 2016 كان بيقول ان الابيكسابان هو الاكسبشن الوحيد فروم اول نواكس ويتش ريديوست ذا ميجر اور كلينيكالي ريليفانت بليدنج فيرسس الانوكسبارين 40 ملغ ويمكن عشان كده البيكس سبارا والابيكسابان خدت تراست من الجايد لاينز سواء النايس جايد لاينز اللي بتريكومند الابيكسابان از ان اوبشن فور ذا بريفنشن اوف فينوس ترومبو امبوليزم ان ادلتس افتر الكتيف هيب اور ني ريبليسمنت سيرجري وايضا التشيست جايد لاينز او الامريكان كوليدج اوف تشيست فيزيشنز which recommend using apixaban rather than alternative forms of prophylaxis. وفي النهاية بنقول الابيكساسباير ابيكساباين 2.5 ملغ it's the most recent new oral anticoagulant from Inspire Pharma بيقدم لحضراتكم significant VTE reduction versus الانوكسيبارين 40 ملغ once daily سواء حالات السيمتوماتيك أو الاسيمتوماتيك بلس ان هو بيقدم سيجنيفيكانت سيرجيكال سايد بليدنج ريدكشن فيرسس الانوكسبارين 40 ملغ بنسبه حوالي 25% ريكومندد باي الانترناشونال جايد لاينز سواء الاي سي سي بي او النايس بلس البيكس اسباير بيتقدم لحضراتكم في صوره فيلم كوت التابلت 30 فيلم كوت التابلت انشورنج ذا مينيمم ديوريشن اوف بروفيلاكسس وبالتالي بيضمن للبيشنت بتاع حضرتك ان هو يكمل فتره الوقايه بتاعته كامله لغايه اخر يوم جرعة البيكس اسباير يمكن زي ما حضراتكم عارفين الانيشيال دوز شوبي تيكن من 12 ل 24 ساعه افتر سيرجري بجرعه 2.5 ملغ توايس ديلي لمده من 32 ل 38 يوم افتر الهيب ريبليسمنت سيرجري او من 10 ل 14 يوم افتر الني ريبليسمنت سيرجري ده شكل علبه البيكس اسباير 2.5 ملغ افيلابل ناو بجرعه ب 30 فيلم كوت التابلت ثلاث شرايط سعر الشريط 89 جنيه و75 قرش أنا بشكر حضراتكم شكرا جزيلا على إتاحة الفرصة لي وأرجو إن أنا ما أكونش أطلت عليكم ولو في أي أسئلة يا ريت كان ممكن نشوفها على الكيو إن دي إيه فجهزي لي الإجابة عليها إن شاء الله. شكرا جزيلا وأسيب حضراتكم دلوقتي مع الأستاذ الدكتور بهاء قرون. شكرا يا دكتور عمرو شكرا يا دكتور عمرو شكرا جزيلا يا دكتور عمرو شكرا جزيلا فور ذيس نايس برزنتيشن أند ناو وي آر ذا فلور إز أوبن فور أني كويشنز أنا شايف Dr. Dr. Mohammed Racha, thank you very much for, for Professor Dr. Hatim for your nice presentation about using RF for cartilage shrinking and cartilage demyelination. Why this cartilage will be healthy in future? Professor Dr. Hatim. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, it's a good question, on the effect of radio frequency. Uh, radio frequency behind the shrinkage the cartilage gives us a stable edge. يعني هو, once it delaminates, um, الناس, even when it's a flat cartilage, the cartilage is still alive. Uh, radio frequency, طبعاً, the heat generating, it's recommended that we reduce the level of heat when we do chondroplasty. And, طبعاً, if it's too high, it will uh, uh, kill this cartilage. Like, and when it's a low, uh, it causes shrinkage. وبالتالي, we find that the cartilage sticks to the acetabulum. And uh, it uh, it relieves the pain. That's for sure. For some of the that we've had to come back as a revision, uh, it's still intact. The cartilage is intact and uh, in place. For it is it remains uh, viable, but we have to uh, lower the temperature of the radio frequency. Thank you, Dr. Hatem. Question uh, second. I think that he will go to Dr. Hassan. Dr. Hassan, Professor Dr. Hassan Husseini. Is there is any rule for? Novel oral anticoagulant for the management of vascular necrosis, especially thrombus, that maybe interfere with this complication. Doctor Hassan. ممكن حضرتك تفتح المايك يا دكتور حسن. كده تمام. أيوة كده صح. بقول الانتي كواجلنت من الحاجات الادويه اللي بتجربوها دلوقتي فور ذا تريتمنت اوف افاسكر نيكروزس لكن ما فيش حاجات سوليد كونكلوجن ممكن نعتمد عليها في العلاج لان ما زال برضه النتائج بتاعتها غير مؤكده 100% طب السؤال اللي برضه القادم ليك انت يا دكتور حسن برضه ان افاسكر نيكروزس وات اذر ميديكال تريتمنت هو الحاجتين المهمين في الميديكال تريتمنت اللي بيستخدموا ولهم نتائج يعني الى حد ما مشجعه هم الاكسترا كوربوريال شوك ويف ثيرابي 
والهايبر باريك اوكسجين لكن عدا ذلك كل الادويه اللي بتستخدم وكل الادر كونزرفتيف ميثودز كلها ما زالت في دور التجارب ولم يثبت فعاليتها حتى الان شكرا دكتور حسن انا عندي سؤال بس للدكتور حاتم حضرتك ما ركزتش في البوست بوست ارثروسكوبيك ريهابيليتيشن ده حضرتك ركزت بس في الارثروسكوبي لكن البوست ارثروسكوبيك ريهابيليتيشن اعتقد ان هو فيري امبورتنت يعني بالذات اللي هو التريانجلر بيس بتاعت الترانسفيرس ابدومن والبروتيس والمجموعه ديت كده مهم قوي يعني مظبوط حضرتك طبعا هو البوست اوب احنا بنبتدي اكسرسايزز فروم داي 1 يعني سيم داي اوف ذا اوبريشن العيان بيبتدي الاكسرسايز اوف ذا هيب زي ما حضرتك قلت احنا وي اتس فيري امبورتنت تو سترينثن كل المنطقه فاحنا وي فوكس اون ذا كور اكسرسايز الابدومن والسباين بلس كل الهيب ماسلز يشمل ابداكتورز الجلوتياي الادكتورز كل دول ار فيري امبورتنت فاحنا بنبتدي فروم داي 1 اكسرسايز يعني سيم داي اوف ذا اوبريشن العام بيبتدي التمارين بتاعته وي الاو بارشال ويت بيرنج برضه ده بيساعد الماسلز تو بي اكتيفيتد ده فروم داي 1 حوالي 20 كيلو جرامز فور اراوند 4 تو 6 ويكس فالعام بيمشي بكراتشز لكن الاكسرسايز هاف تو ستارت داي 1 وليها دور كبير قوي في الاوت كوم يعني زي ما حضرتك قلت العيان اللي بيلتزم بالاكسرسايز بيلاقي نتيجه احسن كتير عن البيشنتس ذات ار نوت كوميتد تو ذا اكسرسايز بوجرام شكرا عندي سؤال للدكتور الشافعي بالنسبه يعني انا ابريشيتنج ان انت يوز يور مايند اند ستيب باي ستيب اند بريزيرفينج ذا هيد ان احنا دايما شايفين ان احنا راشنج دايما للعيانين حتى الايدج بتاعت الارثروبلاستي وينت داون يعني فطبعا مهم قوي ان احنا نحافظ على الهيد از ماتش از وي كان فالفراكشر او نون يونايتد فراكشر نيكو فريمر من الحاجات اللي هي فيها الوت اوف ديبيت ومحاوله الهيلنج دي فيري امبورتنت يعني ف هل هل انت ممكن نعمل فاسكولار انجيوغرافي بفور السيرجري؟ حضرتك تقصد عشان الهيد ولا الفيشن؟ الاثنين ما هو انا عايز اشوف العيانين انا مش عارف طبعا ده واخد تروما قبل كده وجاله فراكشر نكو فيما هي المسج اللي انا عايز اوصلها لحضرتك ان احنا وي كان سسبكت الاي في ام في الحالات اللي فيها سيفير تروما سواء نجليكتد او بريزنتد ليت لاي سبب او هيد انجري او وات ايفر او فيري ديسبلايزد اللي هم دول الحالات اللي هي في اليانج ايج بتبقى فيري سيريس في دول ممكن ان احنا نعمل اللي انا اللي انا شايفه ان هو اسهل وممكن اي اورثبيديك تروما سيرجن يعمله اللي هو البيديكال بون ماسل جرافت مش فاسكولار مش بيديكال فاسكولار ومش فري فاسكولار ودي ممكن يعملها لو هو سسبكتد ان ممكن يحصل افاسكولار نكروز في فيري بريشس يانج تروما فيكتيم يعني فهو في ممكن ساعتها دي انا الحاجه المسج الثانيه ان هو الواتسون جونز فيرسس البوستيرير او السميث بيترسون ممكن يقلعوا فراكشر تيبل يقلعوا ريموفال اوف ميتال يقلعوا ايمجينج زي ما حضرتك عايز اكسبوجر للهيد امبل اكسبوجر ميني سورسز اوف بيديكال جرافت كل الماسلز اللي قدام ممكن اخدهم وذ بيس اوف بون ماسل بيزد واحطهم في التراف بعد ما اخلص العمل. ثانك يو فيري ماتش. عندي سؤال اتفضل دكتور حسن. انا ليا سؤال للدكتور عمرو مسار. شركه شركه انسباير نزلت الريفر سباير وبعدين نزلت الايبكس سباير فهل ار يو كومبيتنج ويز يور سيلف ولا انتم بتشتغلوا بمقوله احمد حلمي الخالده كل نفسك قبل ما غيرك ياكلك <تصفيق> الحقيقه يا دكتور ان زي ما حضرتك بتقول احنا شركه انسباير يمكن اول شركه مصريه كانت موجوده في السوق المصري بالنواكس كريفر سبان وفعلا الريفر سباير ويمكن الحقيقه في يمكن النتيجه لكده فعلا لقينا من دورنا ونتيجه للترند اللي موجود في الفتره الاخيره ولقينا كتير من حضراتكم وعلى مستوى العالم كله في اتجاه كبير تجاه الموليكيول او الاذر موليكيولز اللي هو الابيكسابان بلس ان في ستيل كتير من الدكاتره برضو بتبرسكرايب الريفاروكسابان فلقينا ان هو واجب علينا ان احنا نوفر تو اوبشنز يبقى احنا عندنا بما ان احنا اول شركه كنا موجودين بالنواك او الريفاروكسابان فاي نوت ان احنا نوفر التو اوبشنز لحضراتكم كريفاروكسابان وكابيكسابان 
يبقى انسباير قدرت ان هي تفيل الجاب اللي موجوده في الثيرابيوتيك اريا دي بتوفير التو اوبشنز بالنسبه لحضراتكم يعني. ثانك يو دكتور عمرو طبعا هو بتنافس نفسك انت يعني في الاخر يعني طبعا والله <تصفيق> فدي دي برضه يعني برضه تتاخد كده نقطه يعني في الناحيتين ان انت جايب ال 5 ملي وال 10 ملي وال 10 ملي فده طبعا ده بيتخلي الواحد طب استخدم ده ولا استخدم ده لكن انا انا عن نفسي يعني يعني شايف ان وجود الاثنين موجودين افيلابل بس برضه لغايه الان الانتي دوت ما زالت برضه هي البروبلم بالنسبه لنا اللي هو السايد افكت اللي احنا بنخاف منها ما زالت برضه دي الارم وبنشوف كتير من الحاجات اللي هي يعني مثلا بوست تورنيكيه ما كان التورنيكيه نفسه وانت ابتديت العيان تلاقي فيها ايكيموزس الجرح نفسه بعض الاحيان بيبقى ايكوميتك وخايفين مش عارفين هل ده انفكشن ولا كوليكشن ولا بتاع فدي كلها حاجات ما زالت برضو بتحط ريد فلاج لينا بتخوف لما يفضل الواحد السيرجن دايما كونسيرن ونفس الوقت خايف لان طبعا انت عارف تعمل اسر بلاستي وتخاف من الانفكشن تعمل مش عارف ايه وخاف من الانفكشن فكل ده بيخليك برضو يعني الرت زياده عن اللازم وطبعا بتحط عليك ستريس وانت نفسك ستريس فمن السيرجري نفسه فده طبعا كله من الحاجات اللي هي بتخلينا فلو في انتي دوت متوفر وبسعر كويس من الحاجات دي كلها اعتقد ان احنا هنبقى يعني اريح شويه في البتاع فانا مش عارف رايي البانلز ورايكم انتوا ايه هو الحقيقه دكتور فعلا مع بدايه ظهور النواكس ما كانش فيه فعلا انتي دوت تماما وورلد وايد فكان الموضوع بيشكل خوف شويه لبعض الناس لان كانت الثيرابيوتيك اريا كلها جديده وما تجربتش على عدد كبير من البيشنت لكن دلوقتي بعد وجود النواكس بصفه عامه سواء ريفاروكسابان او ابيكسابان بقالنا اولموس دلوقتي في مصر حوالي 10 سنين وورلد وايد اكتر من كده واوريدي افيلابل دلوقتي في انتي دوت لكن الحقيقه هو مش افيلابل في مصر هو افيلابل خارج مصر وسعره الحقيقه يعني عالي جدا آه لكن يمكن دلوقتي النواكس مع تجاربها وانها دلوقتي بقت بتستخدم في الكلينيكال براكتس كمان في انديكيشنز اذر ذان حتى المين ابروفد انديكيشن اللي هو التوتال هيب والتوتال ني ريبليسمنت سيرجري فيمكن ده ادى التراست اكتر فيها الحقيقه عن قبل كده او عن بدايتها ده نمبر 1 لو هنتكلم النهارده عن البيكس سباير او الابيكسابان كموليكيول يمكن الحقيقه زي ما اكدنا خلال المحاضره يمكن هو لو هنتكلم منه او هنميزه عن الاذر نواكس يمكن هو الوحيد اللي كان بيقلل السيرجيكال سايت بليدنج فيرسس الانوكسيبارين اللي هو اوريدي متجرب وبقاله على مدار سنين فاتت كتير جدا واخد تراست كل حضراتكم تقريبا فيمكن دي النقطة اللي بتميز الابيكسابان في الحتة دي ان هو بيحقق الافكاسي بلس ان هو بيحقق بالانس سيفتي في نقطة السيرجيكال سايد بليدنج ويمكن دي اكتر نقطة بتبقى مقلقة شوية زي ما حضرتك تفضلت وقلت سواء للبيشنت او او للطبيب وين بريسكرايبنج انتي كوجلانس ان جنرال شكرا دكتور عمرو اعتقد ان ما فيش اسئلة تانية موجودة في النهاية يعني بنشكر شركة انسباير بشكر السبيكرز البروفيسور دكتور حسن الحسيني عند البروفيسور دكتور محمد الشافعي عند البروفيسور دكتور حاتم جلال ونقول لكم تصبحوا على خير وكل سنه وانتم طيبين عاشورة بكره ان شاء الله عشان نلحق نتصحر بقى عشان خاطر يعني نصوم ان شاء الله الجميع شاكرين دكتور اسامه شكرا جزيلا شكرا جزيلا لحضرتك دكتور بهاء والبروفيسور دكتور حسن والبروفيسور دكتور محمد الشافعي والبروفيسور حاتم جلال شكرا جزيلا على اليوم القيم ده ونتمنى يعني وجود حضراتكم دايما في شر العلم دايما ونسبر في الاسبوع الجديد شكرا على شاكرين خالد حافظ طبعا على على المودريتنج والوبينار وشكرا لجميع شكرا يا فندم تصبحوا على خير السلام عليكم شكرا وعليكم السلام وعليكم السلام شكرا جدا يا فندم لحضراتكم شكرا جدا لحضراتكم شكرا يا فندم شكرا يا فندم